Hey everybody, I'm Dreamboat, and we're going here live here with Friday Night TF Live. It's just us talking. You get to know us. You've seen us on stream casting, but you probably haven't actually realized who we are. So I'm Dreamboat. I'll be kind of like, I guess, hosting this and being the guide. With me, I have Fawzum, uh, Render, Kaiza, Brodogs, Fear, and Communist. So I got a good cast. Everyone want to just say hi? Take your pick. Let's go with Foz first, I guess. Hi, I am Foslum. That is all. Alright. Render? Yeah, I'm Render. Pocket 4. Can not sub the trap? Kaza, I like the, uh, like the figure you're holding up there. Yes. It's a <laughs> Mac Tonight figurine. It's if anyone beautiful. doesn't know what that is, please look it up. But it was a series of uh, McDonald's Happy Meal toys. Um, I'll be anyway, back. I'm going to look yeah. that up. Anyway, uh, I'm Kaiser. I do the stream production and camera work for TF Live TV at the moment. Used to play TF2 back in like 2011. Got to top three with Free Creepers, and yeah, I'm basically retired from the game now, but contributing still. Uh, I'm not on production tonight though. That's Brodogs if he wants to quickly introduce himself. And I think that leaves me. I'm fear. I cast sometimes. I play sometimes. And I'm currently backing up for Can't Stop the Trump, I think. Is that what we're called? Yeah, yeah something like that. Well, I mean, I mean, we you did you said it leaves you. It didn't actually leave you. We have one other guy in this call, but he's oh. really kind of useless. Uh, we yeah. did forget about <laughs> communists. But I think everyone forgets about him anyways. I don't we'll, we'll give him a little spotlight. That's a lot. I don't actually do anything for uh, uh, TF Live. Um, uh, um, I guess like I play TF2, and that's don't, it. Don't you have the most messages in our Slack? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he looks very loud. Very good. And, and I wonder how many of them are a combination of an infamous spider gif and a Mario koala. Oh, don't, don't bring up the spider <laughs> gif. Don't bring up the fucking spider gif. Someone do an at everyone in the Oz Fortress Discord. Brodog's do it, he's an admin. So yeah, it's uh... And then I guess there's me. I'm Canadian, it's probably, you probably noticed that because I don't talk funny like these guys. Um, yeah, I play ESA Open, I've casted for just over a year and a half now. And been with Oz Fortress since I think January is when I came crawling to you, Brodog's. Maybe? Yeah, I'm loving my time here, so... We're just gonna... Be, I guess spitballing topics before I kind of guide you guys through. Any of you guys actually want to open with anything? Like any certain things you want to talk about while we're here? May as well throw it to the panel here. Yes. The, uh, pretty hype. I think it's the only reason we're doing this. So, yeah. Yay for that. No, I, I thought the reason we were doing it is because the community needs more Dreamboat and Fosm. So, like, we're doing it just so that they can get my it. name right, then... If you pronounce <laughs> my name right, then maybe... I will never learn that. You've known that. It's a it's fucking L. People need to just, like... It's an L, not an I. Foslum? 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 Yes. Foslam? Foslam. It's an L, Foslum. not an I. Yes, there we okay. go. Got it, Foslam. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm... It's great. Um... Like, the impact... The big one for me is the fact that Truck Truck was at 100 viewers earlier today when it when the update came out. And within, what was it, an hour of the update, he was sitting at 600 viewers. So it definitely is showing impact. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, I don't really stream TF2 that often on my own channel, to be honest. Sometimes, but like, basically it comes down to whenever I'm playing. I don't think, the problem with it is, is that, you know, like, the po most popular streams are going to be at the top, and there's no real incentive to, like, be scrolling through and, like, oh, here's, like, a smaller one, let's go pop into that. I mean, it's not stopping anyone from doing it, but there's current, like, I don't know, I just think the way it's implemented is very, the popular streams are just going to get more popular, so... 
Um, is that I think it's still great. I think more people it will uh, introduce more people to like comp in general and stuff. But yeah, it just uh, I think um one of the things that uh in my opinion uh what's it Counter Strike Go does really well is that you can like search by uh like map and um mode I think. But this is just currently like the mo top five most popular streams, and that's that. You click view more, which takes you to Twitch to see anything else, which is I mean, a the... bit of a bummer. But I mean, it's early days, so you know. The nice know thing about it goes. the view more going to Twitch is the fact that I guess like a lot of people don't kind of. I mean, clearly don't notice that there are TF2 streamers, otherwise it wouldn't have as big an impact as it did. So I guess it does kind of open some to actually go to Twitch and be like, wow, these are TF2 players playing TF2. Um, so really where I'm most excited has to be, I mean, from this organization standpoint, matches from, you know, TFTV, just any of the lands, any of the orgs matches, because they get fairly good viewers as is. But they're usually the most viewed TF2 moment happening that day, short of, I think, Fanny streaming or something. So and with I-58 coming up in, just in I think it's five months, having it implemented is just going to be huge for that viewer base. Protox didn't do an at everyone still. He just posted the link. Yeah, do add here. Yeah, I'll show you some. No, it, there isn't. It's just there's only at everyone. Wow. What a wimp. He doesn't he doesn't respect us. What are they gonna do to like... you? Yeah, you're admin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that for a bit. So yeah. um recently us Fortress Rebranding, the the main league <laughs> rebranding from Al, like a Fortress Winter League in every season, all year long. Um, that's always been the somewhere. thing that's bugged me for at least four years, that it just kind of kept going. And I'm like, haha, real funny guys, and then it never, the joke never ended. Um, cause uh, yeah, like the the if for those of you who don't know. Um, Alts Fortress Winter League, we used to have an old league that was just called Alts Fortress League. Um, Alts Fortress League was just like a monthly thing. You would get like one match a month or every two weeks, I forget. I forget. Two I weeks. think it was two weeks. Okay, yeah. So, one match every Hold two weeks. Don, and, um, I hate to cut you off because, uh, getting messages from a couple of people just saying that bro dogs might, like, they can't hear bro dogs. Uh, you have to Sorry about areas. that. Good yes. Good. That's some like, good. Blah, blah, blah. We have fun. Right? They give him money. That's yeah, well, we'll go get to that. We'll get to that. Anyway, he, he won't so, steal your money. So yeah, there used to be uh, Alts Fortress League, which is uh, you would get a match once every two weeks, and um, Winter League was supposed to be a more serious league, and uh, for a while, Winter League and uh, Alts Fortress League went congruently. They played congruently in the two separate things, um, and then we had another Winter League, and we called it Us Fortress Winter League Summer Edition, and then we had Winter League 3, and I'm like, okay, that's fine, so I guess we're going to have like a Summer League again, or oh, Summer Edition, right? Not nah, just Winter League 4, and from that day forward, <laughs> it's just been Al, and it's... Yeah, when I yeah. when I came over, so, yeah, the recent rebranding made certain uh, it's good. pedantic man very happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I came over here, like I said, it was back in January, which in North America is winter. I come over and the first thing I do is the summer cup, and then two months later, you guys are ex were expecting to have a winter league, and I'm like, what kind of seasons does your like, yeah. country have? I was so confused. I think, uh, just generally, cups are just, bra like, tournament brackets. Leagues are a ladder. I just um, I guess that's some, like, messed up seasons or something. Yeah, well, uh, Australia's backwards, right? Very Is it backwards. true your toilets flush the wrong way? 
There's, they don't flush any direction. Yeah. yeah. They're that's, not like... That's like a myth. They're not, um... They're not a toilet that's very full of water. It's a very well, shallow... Very shallow toilet bowl. Fe anyway. Felix looks really confused. It's like, hey guys, welcome <laughs> to a TF2 yeah, base podcast. No, uh, Brodox, set your attenuation in Mumble to zero. Like, attenuate other applications by zero in Mumble, Brodox. Um... Yeah, where were, okay, yeah, the fundraiser. So, so, yeah. so yeah, fundraiser, yeah, so, money. Ultimate League 15, <laughs> rebranding, and we're getting some actual money. Uh, unlike a lot of, unlike ESCA, Ultimate this is a community-run um, website, so for pretty much all the time, the only time we really got prizes is from uh, sponsored, like, cups, like, uh, the old uh, Net Game Radio Invitational, Foosh Sixes Invitational, and Clan Spot Masters, way back when that was like 2009 to 2011, um, and I think some off brackets here and there. Um, and so, yeah, it'll be the first league in a very long time with uh, cash prizes on the line. Uh, actually, um, I think in Alpha previous, team. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that previous leagues yeah, we've had true. like. Uh, I think we've had some item donations from uh, people like a vendor and such, like keys and whatnot. But uh, yeah, cash prizes, everyone. Yeah, and speaking of the community, we probably should give a shout out to Runaway, I think it is, who like originally contacted Brodogs, and I think he dropped the first three hundred dollars, and it was all added on from That's Brodogs, crazy. Obla, and Tom, which is fantastic. And then obviously, like community can just keep donating. I think I have that right. Was it Runaway Brodogs or yeah? yeah. Yeah, yeah run away, $300. And I think the other thing we should kind of look at, too, is the cool part of the prize pool, I guess, is that uh, the fact that, if I was reading it correctly, that the winner can choose to either get the full prize pot for, like, first, second, third, if they go to I-58, as in to, like, help pay towards it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And obviously... You know, currently the top team, Jasmine, like, Groot has kept saying that, you know, they're pretty much confirmed going to I-58, so... Assuming be, Ego... They're using a certain European merch. We... That hasn't been publicly announced yet, Tom. Mm. I don't think we should talk about it on the stream. That is hearsay. I... Yeah. I, I, I don't think we should uh, unleash any shocking details. Definitely anything. shocking. I, well, uh, uh, it, It's gonna... Uh. It's gonna shock everybody. Let, let's, yeah. let's just... You guys just are really leave it fucking that. subtle. <laughs> real good. <laughs> all three of you real professional. Like real professional. We can, I mean, we should... don't worry. We've only got like nine viewers. No one's paying what? attention to this. Still, don't, don't make any second. threats, guys. Our nine viewers. Yeah. Wow, we offended Kaiser. Holy, he oh, just shit. got up Kaiser's and left leaving. on that one. Rest in peace. Oh no, uh, just like turning on a. There you go. Turning, turning the, the lights on. on. But okay, so uh, yeah, Probably back thing. to the whole I-58 thing. It's either uh, they get the prize pool to go to I-58, which, you know, if Jasmine win, that's what they'll be doing. Or the other thing was, like, if they don't want to go to I-58, it gets, like, distributed first, second, third, fourth, I think. I think that's the clause, if they if they don't, if they I have no plan. first, second, third. Think first, second, like, third, okay. yeah. But if it, is it if that... Is it like the condition is only if they don't go to I-58, can they just still choose to take all the money for themselves? Even if they don't go to Act 58, or is that like... I... I mean... Who knows? I don't know, I'd assume that it would be on the condition they go to I-58, just because... That makes sense. I mean... I, I mean, I'm sorry, what team... You give them the option, like, hmm, we can take all the money, or we can give it to other people. No, they're gonna take the money. Yeah, like, of course. who wouldn't? But... No, 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 but I mean, like, even if they're not going to I-58, can they just take all the money and still not attend? Like, was that part of it? No, they need to take, okay. they need to go, they want the first prize, all, yeah, all the money. Well, obviously, like, we should just say, the two teams that are likely to be, unless, you know, Tom, your and Render's team, like, has the craziest upset of, like, fucking key history. Don't think that's happening. It's well, gonna I mean, be, it's gonna be Jasmine or fucking... Roster Shuffle, baby, Roster Shuffle. Roster Shuffle, um, it's gonna be Jasmine or not I am, because I'm not calling them by their real name, because their real name is fucking stupid. I mean, I'm calling them by it's my ego, asshole pronunciation of it. It's, uh, Ego Waffles. Ego yeah, Waffles. Not very funny. Yeah. 
So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about that. <laughs> you know, the two teams here. Talking about the power rankings going into I'll switch to, uh, League yeah. 15. Yeah. Yeah, was yeah. that? Was, was certain, that... certain community members responsible for them and has already gotten a lot of fucking hate for them. I uh, wonder who was that, that is. Do we have to open a swear jar for Foslam? Yes. Yes, we do. I'll stop. I'll stop. Family show, kids. Family show. Even right. though I think you're older than me. Alright, anyway. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Teams to watch out for in Australia going into this uh, new league. So, we've had, yeah. I think the only real... What what teams have stuck around from last season? And Jasmine obviously and Jasmine's here. And only Jasmine. Jasmine. And which team, sorry? Only Jasmine. To be honest, like as a full team, with, like very little changes, Jasmine. Okay. Did the Eleven Corners team was that a thing before? Because I know all those people are friends. Oh, no, I'm, not, I'm not sure about teams that have like kind of moved up the ranks and us in Prem together. No, like I know Pause, Quid, and um, Modus have played together a couple of times, but I don't, it's not really the same core. I don't think as like previous seasons, so I wouldn't say so. Yeah. yeah. So the, yeah, the teams in Prem, we'll go. We'll just go through them. So we have Can't Stump, Can't Stump, the Trump, Cooking with Coolio, FIFO, Home Alone, Jasmine T, Long Live the Meta, Ego, and Eleven Corners. So that's uh, eight teams making up Premier Division, and uh, Jasmine T and Ego are probably the top two in that division. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, e- uh, Ego is Jupiter's team for anyone who's not. Like familiar, like it's yeah, essentially. So it's go essentially. Over, let's I go over the ro- yeah. Let's go over the roster for Ego then. Okay. It's Yuki, Aporia. What uh, classes are y- they playing? That's important. That's Puck and Roma yeah. Soldier. It's Termo Demo, Jersh Medic, and Faithless and Namie. Namie on Scouts. Okay. So you got so- the big three from I fifty two back on their main classes, which mm. I know for one is. I, I'm in touch with all the NA people, uh, like the whole NA scene. I guess kind of the pulse of what people are hoping. And with, you know, the performance, I think if you ask one I-52 moment that everyone remembers, not much to your distaste, Aus- Aussies, I'm sorry, is definitely that immunity mixed up game. It's just a game yeah. on whole. It was. To be fair, it's not. As, it wasn't as bad as the TCM game. Uh, was it TCM? No, no, TCM? I wasn't yeah. gonna mention that one. No, I, I've been crucified for that. No, no, it was TCM. It, it was TCM. TCM. Yeah, that was, that that game was heartbreaking on but so many it, levels. It, it was. I was like, I show people who don't understand TF2, who don't watch it, that I fifty two mix up snake um immunity snake water game, and they're like captured by it because it was such a good game. And for the NA scene, like you, I'm hearing a lot of people that are really hoping that um, the Dago goes, just because you know it's got the three people from Immunity. They're the ones that they remember putting on great performances. And I can't say I'm not in that boat too, because I think they could be an entertaining addition to the land. That's for sure. I think that's like yeah. the, I, think, I think that's a frustrating thing for Jasmine because yeah, when everyone thinks Australian TFT, they obviously think you know X Immunity. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's that's so why yeah, I'm like happy kind, yeah, that Ego is kind of stealing going. their thunder almost. Yeah, because Jasmine They're... have been the team like for the past couple of seasons. Like aside from the one season where Yuki made that cash money team for the sole purpose that there was a prize pool, like Jasmine have been like the best team for you know, the past three, four seasons. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these two teams stack up against each other, especially because like you know we haven't seen them really play against one another just yet. The season hasn't really started, so. Um, I mean, if anyone has any info, if they've been scrimming or like they've been, uh, they've the been results of that, they've been scrimming they've been regularly, scrimming. and for the most part, like preseason, like Jas- uh, Jasmine were crushing them. Mm-hmm. Recently, it's been a bit more even, but still, I'd say Jasmine are probably still the stronger team at the at this moment in time. Oh well, yeah, that's fair enough because like pretty much the only the reason why uh, Immunity was so strong is because they literally had been playing f- together for like four solid years. I want to say four years. About that, yeah. Yeah, four yeah. years straight. Um, before they were picked up by Immunity, they used to be known as A-Clan, which is a harken back to a real old-time Elseworks clan. Um, yeah, yeah. So A-Clan, they've been around for a very long time. And, you know, um, one thing that kind of people don't really understand is that, um, you know, these players aren't just... 
by like sure by themselves they're like all powerhouses in their own right. I would say like personally probably their uh, I guess weakest link would have been um, uh, Aporia out of out of them all as like a, a from an individual standpoint. But like the point I'm trying to make is that it's not just like the individual skill that makes up a team. It's um their chemistry it's and the chemistry. how they act and how they act together and like their overall play style and it really like shows after four years of playing together. Things that like new teams or newly uh, formed teams have to like dedicate uh, mental energy and um, communications to a team like that that's been playing for so long doesn't have to do that, and so they can like uh, spend that energy on like other things that will like help with victory and stuff. It's like one of the things that Boat talks about a lot when he's like back when he used to like help uh, lower div teams out. They like he would go on about like. You know, you guys are talking a lot, but you're not like saying the right things. Like, you see, you you you're saying like what's on your screen, but like, does that actually mean anything? No, it doesn't. So, um, for teams like yeah, for teams trying to really break into like the upper echelon of play, you really need to kind of stick out your group of people um, if you want to really get any big success. I yeah, think. Thing, um, I think yeah, egos pretty strong like by itself Tomo, Oporia, Yuki um and, yeah and who else is Josh, Faceless and Naomi. Naomi right so yeah Naomi um let's talk about him for a bit so he's kind of like really semi new to Premier Division right he's been this is um, his first season yeah first season in Premier Division oh, what a season yeah, yeah like he's no kidding well, I mean, like, in the um, thread before, like, he wasn't even playing Div 2, like, a year ago or something. Like, he posted something like that, and, like, he has, like, sort of one of those players that just sort of shot out of nowhere and just oh, got yeah. really good he's, he's really quickly. He's been saying, uh, you know, new computer, new me kind of thing. Hmm. He's, I've had a brief discussion with him, and um, also, uh, not, not, a uh, not to, um, what's the word? I don't know. Um, he plays a lot of MG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not to well, discredit, he's, not to he's discredit always him, but MG, yeah, though. he's uh, he's definitely a rising star of Oz Fortress at the moment. Um, and it'll be interesting to see. Like, I think uh, at the moment, you guys probably uh, he is like uh, weakest player is probably Faithless at the moment. I think he's doing. I, I think he's, from what I've seen, he's doing a very good job at keeping up with like other scouts, he's, like uh, Elmo he's doing and Madness. Well. He, he's he's a strong scout, but yeah, is like, that he's enough? limited by his team in, by itself. Like if his team does badly, he's gonna do badly. And yeah. he hasn't really like entirely proven himself yet. Like he's he's a strong player by himself, sure, but as soon as ego think, team, he the... needs to really prove himself yet. I think the thing with Faithless is like he's never like traditionally put in that huge amount of time. And oh, sort okay. of like, you know, like being there. I think like, you, you, this is a real big chance, like prove himself. It's like one of the best cards in Australia, and I really do, do hope he like, takes the opportunity and puts the time in. Yeah, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll sweep in and <laughs> guys are the savior. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I've well, heard, it, it's uh, word just... on the grapevine is that uh, some of the team members on Ego. Are... Frustrated at the scouts in Premier Division and how there's like no good scouts anymore. There are some good scouts, it's just either they're in teams or yeah, but like like, you know, like in comparison to like scouts, like I don't know, like two or three years ago, I would yeah, say, that's gonna, that's I would say, I, I think that's another thing worth things, talking though, yeah. about. It's kind of like the player disparity in a Premier Division these days. You know, people have been saying like, oh, TFG's dead or whatever for like literally like. Seven, eight years. Um, God, I hate that statement. Like, yeah, it's sorry, especially popular. Bit of a side it's especially rant. popular here in Australia. But um, I want to go on a bit of a, just on a side. Yeah, rant go here, for it. Go just on that. Let that because, tension rip. Like, people keep saying that this game is dead, but I've lo- like you look back at like the last ye- calendar year, year and a half of TF2, and. I mean, again, I'm talking from more of an NA standpoint, but you like each league, ESCA, UGC, and UGC, and I believe ETF2 as well, have all seen rises in registration. Uh, we had I-52 was insane. 
I-55 was even better in terms of production, and the stuff that they have planned for I-58, I've heard, is insane. It was also uh, DreamHack. We have, yeah, we have DreamHack, where, which I believe there's rumors that we're going to be in another DreamHack, too. Like, that was the start of something, which Ooh, is insane. I like. Uh, we also, now we're getting matchmaking. We have the stream list that we talked about earlier. Um... Even tip of the hat, like you look at it, it started with I think it was twenty six thousand for the first tip of the hats raised, then a hundred and eight, and then they broke two hundred thousand dollars raised this year. And while it is an event three years going, it's still kind of like congruent with the growth that we're actually seeing in the competitive scene. Like, yes, the old players are leaving, and in Australia, you guys saw that as for a while, immunity left. Uh, Sheep and Snowblind that uh, still haven't returned. Uh, in NA, you had Proyotech break up, Classic Mixup left. And that's kind of like where the whole TF2's dying thing came from, is all these super veteran teams were disappearing. But at the same time, now all this new talent is starting to pick up, and we have such a bright future for this game, at least in my opinion, that I really can't stand that whole this game's dead. Like, there's so much coming forth for it, you know? Mm. But yeah, so, you know, none of that matters, dude. TFT's dead. Fuck it. <laughs> like that can, thing, can we kick Kaiser? Uh, I'll, I'll let you finish, never but TF2 is dead. Yeah, pretty much. What is dead may nah. never die. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah the thing is, it was never really alive to be dead. Like, uh, no, it, not when it started out, it was pretty damn alive, dude. I, I would yeah, say the team, golden man. era, at least in, um, at least in Australia, I can't say for America and Europe. Um, the golden era was probably between, I want to say, 2009 to 2011. Or even just 2009 to 2010. We had a lot of top two tournaments during that time. Uh, a lot of great matches from... Uh, a lot of sponsors. Yeah, a lot of sponsors, I think, crazily enough. But, but then um, again, we're getting like, sponsors phrase, coming back. We're getting, uh, we just had Ronin and Perilous have picked up a team in the last few months. Yeah, sponsors uh, are coming Nerd back. Rage, Nerd Rage is now also in uh, Europe. Have can, we just, uh, can we just um, differentiate uh, multi-game organizations and sponsors? Because they are different. Because uh, that's one thing that's always been bugging me about this new shift into esports. How everyone calls like a, like an MGO or oh, they're an esports team. Well, like Back in my day, kids, we never used to call it that. <laughs> I hate to be that... That dude, Fair but uh, no, yeah, my bad. Like, so, like you're fully yeah, sponsors, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Multi game organizations are different things, yeah. So, um, when I say sponsors, I mean like companies investing in a, a, a thing outside of their um direct operations to yeah. get their name out. And you know, multi game organizations like Frenetic Array, uh, Immunity, etc., they're, they're orgs that. Their yeah. full purpose of supporting games, right? Uh, I might I see an MTO see down here in Australia again soon. Word on the grapevine. <laughs> but on the grapevine. Lots okay. of grapevines. So, uh, can't, can't yeah. Stop the so, so back at, back to the topic at uh, <laughs> at hand. There, um, so yeah, golden era of TF2 in Australia, at least I would say 2009 to 2010 or 11, depending on what your definition of golden era was. We had, yeah, we saw a lot of top tier um, TF2 matches from back in the day, um, which by the way, you can uh, watch a bunch of 2011 games and 2010 games if you go to twitch.tv slash sadgasmtf2. It's a guy in Australia streaming some really old STVs, which are uh, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, he had Australian, some, like, season American... 6 NA stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, old, old time games, like, like honestly, um, so far, to me, I haven't felt more hyped watching TF2 than watching Mad Dogs versus Spadebox back in like 20, 2009, or Encore versus Spadebox as they were picked up by Encore at some point, um, and or Encore versus YSW. Um, yeah, those. If when I think of uh, Australian TF2, those are the real like names that come to mind. Partly just because I've been around it so long, I think everyone who is outside of Australia these days won't think of that. They'll think I'm immunity and they're like four year reign over everyone. 
I mean, I've been around that long as well, but I think this season is going to be pretty awesome. I, I think this season be will be good. great for competition and uh, spectator thing, but um, what I'm worried is, you know, overall skill level, right? Because, you know, with... Uh, I don't think with that's this, necessarily with true, this, and I think yeah, you're but, being the Celtic. Yeah, but, like, with this newfound, like, uh, um, interest in, like, sending people frequently to Insomnia Land, I think, I don't know, it's just something worth thinking about. I mean, here, here's the thing, is... Honestly, in my opinion, from just hearing what you're saying and seeing what a lot of, like, I guess older people in the game are saying, is that Tom's totally right. You're talking more out of nostalgia, and it's like, these are the games that, like, I was really invested in the scene when I was watching, and they were great games. You're less invested in the scene now, and now you're, and because you're not as invested as those games, you're not getting the same level of enjoyment out of them, so that yeah, you're, that's so you're feeling like, Oh, like it was better back then. Like you get it all the time in the, in other esports as well. People were saying 1.6 was better, like a better era for CS:GO than Global Offense or Counter Strike than Global Offensive is. Uh, you have people saying that the old Nip Rain was better for CS:GO. Like you get a ton of those, whereas people don't acknowledge the new talent coming up. Like I guess they downplay the achievements of the new. Yeah, that's until the fair. older totally forgot. Yeah, that's fair. That's a fair assumption. I think that's true for a lot of people, um, and probably where the whole "TF2 dead" phrase comes from. Um, so yeah, I, I guess back, game, to, man. back to <laughs> like veteran disparity in like upper leagues. Um, so like realistically, so um, let's go through the rosters real quick. I'm just gonna like glance over a bunch of them. Yeah, we may as well. Yeah, like, yeah. We've been for Ego. Let's, yeah, I mean, you guys had your first yeah, game last night, which was uh, fucking hype. Like, I, me and Smith really enjoyed casting that. Like, you guys were time alone. We tied 1-1. It was a cool game. Um, I don't know, it was like, I guess... Like, the start of take us for your roster, may as well. Okay, uh, so... Um, I'm a pocket for the team. Tom is a Rainbow. I scout to the moment a uh, shooter and disturbed. You got good old Enrith, the god as of last night, on demo, and Drams the medic. What a squad. What a, what a team. Can't yeah. stop us. So they had a... Oh, jeez, I've just knocked my laptop over. They've gone like 1-1 last night um, with Home Alone. I did predict Home Alone to beat you, which is a bit awkward because I'm actually backing up for that team. Um, but I think oh, that... Yes. I think there's like a a good sort of third to fourth battle which could potentially develop between those third two teams. Third to fourth like, is really close this season. I feel like there are some good players on both of those teams and especially that are good at different things. So I think like you'll start to see some like two I, I really styles. don't think it would be like fair to count out cooking with Coolio in fifth place. Well, no, 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 definitely not. Like I just quickly bring them up. Like I ran them fifth my power rankings and I was thinking about like they were probably going to go into my top after they like destroyed long with the meta like they crushed them and i predicted a really close game for that but um so bad for our, for our boys yeah, Sony and Smith, but, um, bad man. yeah but just how close your two game was your guys game was like obviously it'll come more into light when you guys verse them in an official but i think right now they're just possibly a step below i don't know like that's just my opinion obviously you guys like to like scrim them regularly and stuff so you'll have more insight but Hmm. I feel like they, they can definitely make playoffs, but I think at the moment they're just like a tiny smidgen beneath you guys. Cooking with Coolio are like uh, are, are quite a good team, um, and I probably under underrated them coming into the season. But they've had players like Locke has now been in Prem for like a minute. This must be for four seasons. They've, they have like a lot of like a lot of experience on that team, which people I don't think are waiting high enough. Uh, even bottom prem like has will have some interesting clashes. I feel like I feel like this is a season where there are sort of some distinct tiers in prem, but within the tiers you get some good battles. So you have like eleven corners in that sort of bottom range. You have FIFO like fly and fly out like the face team or whoever's Can running that. Can we quickly talk about a uh, surprise appearance by my boy Nutty Nato in FIFO? <laughs> I just looked at the roster and I saw his name. Nutty Nato? Yeah, is he, 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 he backing up? What? 
he, he must be roster writing. This is amazing. <laughs> I just saw his name. I'm like, damn. So how would you score that? <laughs> That's and great. Else, um, long live the meta. Of it, like I'd probably say would would be battling with eleven corners and that and five. Foot. Yeah, I think they're probably around that level. Um, maybe if Arbenda stops playing Pyro, they'll be able to win. That would, that would be that would be really nice. Stop but that would also pyro. maybe make them not the team that they are today. So. Yeah, they'd definitely be higher. Hey, we have 22 <laughs> viewers. Good stuff. Cool. Moving up. How many people? Most of them are like yeah, it's on the front page. To be honest. Front page. We, we should be. Uh, I reckon we should be on the stream list at the moment. Uh, we're currently like I think we're the fifth most viewed TF2 stream. Oh, Maybe okay. more. Um, no, we're quite a bit lower. Okay, oh. I was I was only looking at the competitive streams, not the uh like overall. Yeah, um, we're eight right other. now, so we got a ways to go. Still, if, go ahead. That's what There's just some out. like real big gossips. People come in here. <laughs> We've already we already are, started that earlier. No gossip. Get more. Are, are we more. are we actually are we actually going to go into the whole leak on this whole? Jasmine well, B shenanigans? Are we like... going to elaborate on that at all? Oh, yeah, or are we going to leave this into some yeah, I feel mystery like that so that they can be shot? Say... No, I, I, I don't. Confirmed. Yeah, that until like bug, an official It post. is confirmed. Brute told me to post yeah, something. Yeah, I know. You're the worst PR manager but ever, until it's been, like, But until it's like <laughs> we get an official article on it or something, like, it, I don't feel like this should just be like spread out. Like, obviously, how vague we've been, like, people can probably work out what's going on. The fact we're talking about Jasmine and I-58 and like, big news aside from the fact that they're going like you know people have some idea but yeah i don't think we should probably talk about it i don't know yeah. doesn't give seem like time. the right idea give yeah it. give it oh, time oh no no what we need to do is we just need to get brute in here or, and, oh uh... god no please not brute in here please <laughs> just no, no. Yeah, and, and, get him. And, and have them announce this here live live on our panel we can <laughs> Please we can have no. him announce it, then we can just analyze this too. Okay, no, 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 this is a good thing. Elmo in chat, uh, saying please address the Brute Oddshot video. Um, can I someone elaborate on the Brute Oddshot yeah. video? Yeah, has, I'm just checking, everyone in here has seen it, right? Like, I no. don't see. I don't know. Yeah, the one okay, I, he trash talks uh, Rando? Oh, like, uh, that one. No, he trash talks oh, no, <laughs> all of he, Ascent. Uh, Rando, all of I mean. NA. He calls yeah, I, I don't. I don't think Brute's in a position to like, call people out for Soldier DM. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah. to quickly go over the video, Paulson's been streaming lately, which has been great. awesome. We need more like top tier 3 talent streaming, which is good. You can um, you can follow me on Twitch. Yeah, follow, TV follow Kaiser. Twitch.tv slash Dreamboat underscore. Yeah, Dark okay. There you go. What? There's two streams already, guys. There we go. So what happened, um, so Paulson was streaming, and they were sort of discussing international teams, and Ascent came up, the topic of Ascent, or Ronin, or whatever you want to call them. And Brute went full on, like, smack talk. Like, he said Rando had less DM than Santa, which was oh. pretty fantastic. He said Mela was, like, the most predictable... I think he called him, like, a 2008 rumor with his jumps and something. He, like, shit talks to scouts, shit talks to... Me like, he completely, like, tears a scent a new one. Um, and it was mentioned on Batcap. Banny retweeted it out, and then Yuki was like, you realize he's probably just baiting all of you guys? I don't know. It, it, it was didn't Banny tweet out something like bring probably. it? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Or like, or no, Banny like, well, said it's not going to work out that way. Or something like that. Right. I think it was Rando then who said like, can't wait to show, can't wait to prove you wrong. Or something. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was some challenge back. It's in, very like, typical brute though, I'd say. Oh, it's, yeah. like a, it's a 100% it's a bait. It's a bait, like for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you just say having a taste of Oswald just at the moment. I, I think the Americans get there too. I talked to Mailer about it and he said like he thinks like it's a really good storyline by fifty eight having yeah. well, like I, devil I, character. I, 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 evil I, no, I agree with that because yeah, you need some previously villains. previously I M have been like, you know, I forty nine was the first one I went to, they were like sort of the underdogs and your know, same sort of thing I fifty two, but they were the team like everyone wanted to love. Now if we have an Australian team that like everyone hates because like Brute keeps shit talking everyone else. That <laughs> yeah, but like, do people it'll really hate the team so much as they're just entertained by a Brute? <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm entertained. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, right? I, know, I think I think okay, I think villain storylines in uh, any competitive game are extremely compelling because like Fanatic, it's such baby. an easy thing to do just to get like generate interest i think it's so easy to do so easy to just like say a few dumb shit and have it backed up and just be like yeah you know cut at us dude 
and then people <laughs> put, that automatically generates interest and it automatically makes people want to see you lose and then when you win it's like ha ha I'm the big dictator running this I'm the boss of this gym and so I think it's real like villains in a uh, um in a uh, competitive games are very important and I think Brulex is doing a great job of filling that role yeah um, also, I kind of just definitely a villain. To, yeah, just to bring this back to something you said earlier, like Dreamboat, you were saying how like everyone's wants like Yuki's team to head back, but again, I think this like it's good to have. We need like new Australian faces faces at an international land. Like we can't. I mean, obviously, it'd be fantastic if we have two teams going like from the Australian scene, but I, I feel like we need new faces just so. I I don't know. It's 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 hard to like. You're totally get this out, right but... because from. Like I said, being in a like, I think if I asked half the people on my friends list who don't watch, uh, like the Oz Fortress scene, and you ask them to name seven Australian TF2 players, they'd name Immunity and Musel. <laughs> and that's it. Like that, that. Oh God. No, no joke. That's what the majority of NA can name, and it's pathetic because I've seen firsthand as a caster how much more talent there is in your scene. Man. No no battle, Nesk is the best. What is this? Nesk is the best! Yeah, actually... <laughs> Wait, where's the Nesk is the best shit? That's a pretty old meme. That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that still on favorite, Wikipedia? That's my that's favorite an, that's Australian TF2 bands, honestly. To be real, uh... Right over my head. Honestly, like... Nesk was the best. Um... But, uh, I, I, I mean, yeah. you know... Him times about. have changed. Goddamn. Uh... Are you calling him Ballot? It's definitely Boat. Hey man, play a potato. Yeah. Well, um... What was I going with this? Uh... Actually, yeah, funny story. Recently saw a picture of Nesk. Yep. That is hilarious. He's, wow, that's, he's a very, that is a he's a very normal, normal story, I can... He's a right, this... very normal looking person. It's, it's, it's not even, like, shock. Shock, like, scandalous image. It's just... Yeah, he's a dude, man. Like, yeah. you know, okay, okay, how are the logic stories? Story? Like... Sorry? Where are the logic stories? Ah, uh, I don't know what The, the Net Cafe like. stories, man. Ah, uh, he <laughs> like the jump out of school to work, to work at a Net Cafe one. That's a good one. Um, anyway. Gosh. That's, uh... I mean, it's slightly that's... more justifiable than dropping out of... Dropping out of out of school and trying to make oh, a living wait. streaming and playing TF2. <clears throat> now, um, people should also wait, have no, as well. Actually, right. funny story. Recently, I was playing an American uh, public like, Valve server, and they're just like, are you Mooselk? I'm like... <laughs> just say yes. Yes. I was just like, yeah, dude. I love shilling. <laughs> Gotta get that money. You're, 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 you're everybody's favorite Disney Channel presenter. <laughs> yeah right. I'm sure you His, whose weaknesses like, yeah. include jelly. Uh, anyway, anyway, watch this Disney Channel show. I anyway, we should not. We should like weaknesses. shy away from this topic. Yeah, yeah let's, let's get, get back, back to reality. To, um, yeah, some sort of competitive TF2 talk, I guess. Uh, what was the last thing we were so, talking about aside from brute so shit talking, talking people? About a, um... Brute shit talking people, essentially. I was gonna oh, say, yeah, 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 talking yeah. about competitive TF2. We're not gonna show. We're not gonna talk about that. Uh, long live the meta game. That, uh, was that, was, that, that was depressing, that game. That was like, Week 1 wasn't wreck. the best of those watch at the moment. I, I think it's kind of cool, too, because it shows cooking with Julio is absolutely for real. I mean, they shit stomped a team that I think everybody, myself included, thought was going to be a lot closer of a game. Um, which, I mean, is nice because cooking... Sorry, what I was think, that dream, bro? That's, that's one for the swear job, buddy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Game with you. My bad. Put in a coin. Someone take over before I. It's 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 a shame we don't have Smith here because I'm sure he would like to comment a bit on that game. He I think he wasn't. Too. He wasn't. He, he wasn't, wasn't happy with his performance. We don't want to. We don't want to hear about his 140 DPM. Like. Wasn't it like 130 or 120? I mean, I was being generous. Ooh. Did he I mean. Demo? That's yeah. pretty sad. I, I didn't like, even know about this game. <laughs> so many, that's a, so that's many a very of players, sad number. Yeah, so many of their players had like more deaths than there were minutes in the match. Just to give you some context, Kaiser. 
Like, this I is, think this both, is a both fair bit of a slam here. Yeah. I don't think this yeah, is no, no, particularly we, we fair. Shouldn't, we shouldn't be too mean. Like, they're, they're a good team. They obviously just what's, have, like, some sort of... What's no, Julio's, like, tonight? current roster? Like, that they, they put in, like, a grand final or some shit? Well, okay. Tom apparently has drama with this. I'm not sure if we're getting into this. Some, some but, drama um, so... regarding Hertz's position on the team. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to go for a pun, like... The, the news is, like, so hot it hurts. I don't know. But okay, I, I was to... going to make some, like, pain pun in there. <laughs> but okay, to, go, to like, go over the roster, they've got Varna, Varna and Cookie on scout. Cookie they picked up, and I think literally, like, the day before, after I think they just dropped Emery from the roster. Or he's backing up or something. <laughs> Hertz roaming, Lock Pocket, obviously, we talked to Lock a, about Lock a bit before, and then Moop and Dave or Coolio on Medic and Demo, when, respectively. When I look at that roster, it's, like... A lot of players that have been lingering around in like Div 2 or low-prem that are in their own ability, in their own right, really good at the game. Yeah. So it's good that they've come together to make a team that can do some work. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Dilly's playing for Varna this week as well, isn't he? Uh, no, yeah. no, I talked to Moop. Varna's going to be back like in a couple of days, so they're going to schedule the their game. Yeah, and they're going to... Uh, Moop told me they're going to schedule their game for when Varna gets back, so they're not going to yeah. play with Dali again. I think that would have been about the same. I reckon Dali and Varna are pretty comparable as far as sort of scouts go. Like, I don't think they would have been giving too much away if they had to play without him. But I suppose you yeah. lose some of the team chemistry when you're playing with a Merc. Flashback up. And that's one thing to look forward to, I mean, with them, with all the other newer teams, is, Jas is Jasmine team's been together for a couple seasons now. And some of these teams are freshly formed. We're at the start of the season, and I'm kind of curious just to see how much development some of these teams do go through over the course of the season. As of course, they're going to build chemistry. They're going to get better. Yeah. Is as mainly mainly talking about we talked about how a, like right off the bat, um, Ego or Ego uh, was struggling against Jasmine. They put up a couple closer results. To like, be fair, whole seasons uh, worth of work. Can they develop? This. Uh, just to preface thing, they were losing to Jasmine because they were literally playing with like a different scout duo every other night. Like they did not have a consistent roster at all preseason. So just to quickly put that out there. Different med, different scouts. I thought Drish was around for a good number of the games. That brick for a little bit. Hard for it, um, dead bulk. Yeah, bulk. Well, yeah, I think still backing up for them. Yeah, they thought about him playing Medic, but they eventually decided to go with Jersh, was the way I heard it told. Bulk like, on Medic? Yeah, yeah he, he, uh, he played yeah. a couple of um, games with them. Hmm, interesting. He, he did a pretty alright job, like, uh, I don't know how hard it is to, I, I, I think you know, his argument for was, like, 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 he wanted to play a TF2, but he didn't want to, like, put in the time to, like, get his aim back, or, like, all that sort whatever. Okay. Like, for me? The main problem with uh, Oz Fortress, like Australian teams, and probably it goes on to like European and American teams, is that there's not enough commitment to like their main class or to like making a team. Because there's a couple of teams that have just, like stuck together and have really committed, and they've shot up the ranks quite quite quickly. I mean, like I can take Nami for example. Like he's committed to a class because he he was all over the shop with the uh, soldier and scout, but now that he's committed to scout, he's really showing his colours. And that's true. I mean, it, so much of this game is chemistry based as well as performance based. And if you put in the time, you're going to succeed. Like, and especially if you put in the time together. So, you know, there definitely is kind of that lack of incentive, which is, I mean, kind of coming back full circle. Why I'm kind of excited with the prize pool being reintroduced here, uh, along with the rebrand, is that there's now a little bit of a financial incentive in Australia for teams to stick together and players to get better. But uh, is is there really, like, how... I mean, again, that's nice in theory, but is this, you know, prize pool going to come back next season? And, you know, is it just going to, again, be Jasmine and a Yuki team fighting out? Like, again, this is all nice in theory, but I... I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't been active in the um, scene, like, for that many seasons, but... It seems just it, 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 there's a lot of like you know team seems forms like for a, a season off. team dies team forms for a season team dies like well, again I, yeah I mean this is a community funded prize pool right so it's not like it's a sponsor it's yeah. a sure there was runaway coming to us first and that sort of started it but still a community member it's not a it's yeah not this a is all off the back of um 
what people want to chip in to try to help the scene. So really, to have us, for us to have consistent prize pools, we need sponsors in the scene, which I think might be possible going forward. But we'll have to see how we go. Yeah. And I mean, no, I think Tip is on the. Go off. ahead. Oh. Yeah, I think for the first time in a while, at least like two years or so, I want to say TF2 is definitely um, on the rise comparatively. Like, it's never going to be a tier one eSport in the oh, same way. No. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that, that, that's dumb to ever assume. Anyone who who thinks that we're going to get three million dollar majors a year like CS:GO has or bigger like Dota has, like. So Straight like the tier one like on es esports right now like CS:GO, Dota, and League, right? And uh, I guess yeah. like some of the MLG circuit stuff, like uh, like some of the Call of Duty console games are pretty popular from what I see. I guess like Call of Duty and Halo would definitely be like one point five. Yeah, yeah they're, like, they're totally... just below. Like they have big prize pools, but it's not as consistent yeah, yeah. Oh, as Dota okay. or League. For sure, for sure. But they have huge casual fan bases as well. Like. So, and that's that's that makes them a, a tiny bit comparable to TF2 because, like, say almost everyone who plays CS:GO is going to know about the competitive mode of CS:GO, and TF2 is a, a bit like COD in the sense that there is a competitive scene, but there's also going to be like all those millions of people who just play it on their PS4 in like their mum's living room or whatever and have no ML360 no scope. Yeah, like it's, they've they've got a, like a huge comparative like um like sort of more casual fan base. Yeah. But again, and I mean, the that, issue... Go on, I was just going to say, and again, that's the potential advantage, I guess, of this whole matchmaking beta that we're in right now, uh, is that there is potential for, um, like you said with CSGO, it's right there in the menu. Everybody knows about the competitive game because it's in the menu. And... I mean, By the way, well, if anyone needs any, uh, if anyone CSK. needs any competitive matchmaking beta passes, hit me up. I've got a stack of them to share. I have a couple as well. Just, yeah. uh, just tweet out at, um, I guess Oz Fortress is probably the easiest handle to have. That way, we we can both yeah. see I'll it. I'll post our Twitters in chat. That, is, that works. Um, I just wanted to chip in. Uh, if you have any questions from the chat, feel free to just post them, and I'll make sure they're asked. Also, if we come back to the imp proving question. I kind of want to look at 11 corners as a team. Yep. Do you, how, do you, how do you think this team is going to go over the season? They recently picked up Rocky on Pocket and they uh, had Roymond before. Before we go through thinking about how they're improved, I just want uh, does anyone have their roster fully off by heart that they want to just yep. read it off so that the people in chat who might not be too familiar with them can get a sense of what they are. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, does, you know, Brody just said they have Rocky recently, like last minute edition on Pocket after uh, No Safe Word died, which sucked. Pause is on Roma, then they've got Frax and Quid on Scout. Modus is playing Demo and Athena on Medic. So let's throw it to. Uh... Work up there? Yeah, let's throw it to one of the guys who's actually. I'm assuming, Tom, your team scrimmed them a few times. Right? Um, kind of rarely, to be honest. Oh, I think this is more a question for Rendar. No, I have like very little limited info on them, to be honest. Well, I, uh, I have th there goes my more. I was just going to throw it to the guys who might have actually scrimmed them right. to give it a sense, but now it's open field. They've been playing with like a, a few sort of core players for a bit, I think. Uh, they've like, they're sort of all friendly. And the last minute pickup of Rocky, uh, obviously, like, he's That's one a of big the. Step up from he's one of the Roman. no safe word. Refugees, like so, him and Cookie and Naomi and all that, are the no safe word refugees. And I think he is definitely an improvement um, on Roman. And I think that Rocky is almost. I think, I think Rocky can get them some wins in low prem that they definitely would have got in Rome uh, with Roman. I think that uh, Rocky, like whatever you think about his like ability to like, you know, like whatever you think about his ability to challenge, like the very top pockets in Australia. I don't think anyone can deny that he's one of the best DM soldiers in Australia, if not in the world, for all you world viewers out there. Like, he's pretty good at MG. Uh, and I think that that's going to get a lot of work done against the teams who haven't really got, like, lots and lots of coordination. So I think they're actually going to do quite well against Long Live the Meta. I think they're going to beat Long Live the Meta. 
Uh, I think they'll definitely to... beat FIFO in my opinion. That, they'll beat FIFO. Uh, I don't think that they have what it takes to beat Cooking with Coolio, Can't Stop the Trump, or whatever the other team is called. Home Alone. Home Alone. Home Alone. I don't think they have it there. Um, I don't think they have the flank to do it. Um, but you know, maybe they'll prove me wrong. These are guys who like they've risen, sort of. I, I don't know if they, I could say they've risen quickly. I, I suppose they have. They haven't really been allowed, around for as long as even like, even you know, you're cooking with Coolio players. I think they're a fairly new team. This is their first season in Prem, obviously. So I think they'll if they can get good wins over FIFO and uh, the sort of the meta long live the meta Pyro team, I think they'll be they'll be setting themselves up to do really well in the future. And I think that. I really hope they have a good season because I think we sort of need six new sort of fresh prem faces. Uh, I hope Rocky does well. Uh, I think he's a I think he's a pretty good guy, and I'm uh, I'm hopeful that he's going to be able to turn around his previous history with uh, a good performance this hour. Good luck to them. Yeah, uh, I mean they just to quickly piggyback off that they did have their first game of the season. Um, sadly, they had to versus Jasmine, which is like. Mm. Probably the worst card at the start of the season they could have had. Um, that they took a round. round off. Like, yeah, five oh six one. Like, you know, that's impressive. You know, I, I give them a lot of credit for that. But um, yeah, hope hopefully they do stick around. Um, apparently some of their players have played in Prem before, like a couple of seasons ago. I think it's like Quid and Frax and I. Rocky. Quid and Frax have both not been in Prem before. Okay, well I don't know. I've, I, pretty... One of them was trying to tell me that some of their players have played in Prem before. I'm not sure how legitimate that was, but. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that playing Jasmine first round is a good thing for them? Because it means they've got the hardest card out of the way in the season. Yeah. Gives them a good chance yeah. to... Except it depends on how you look at practice. It. Yeah, well, you just don't want to lose too much heart early on in the season. Because sometimes you want to be like, oh yeah, it's okay, we have all the hard teams first, so we'll get battered, we'll use it as a chance to improve, and then we can beat some of the easier teams. Because what you don't want is your team to like gradually improve over the course of the season, but you're bad at the start, and then... So you lose to the teams around your level, and by the end of the season, you probably could have beaten them. But unfortunately, you're now playing Jasmine. You're now playing not I am. You're now playing you know like the best teams. Uh, but one thing that is a bit of a danger is you can get a bit like demotivated if you know what I mean. So say your first two uh, two games, uh, it's a good thing that they got around. I know it sounds like we're talking up a lot, but it is like a small victory, and it's like a bit of a consolation prize. But if your first three Prem hour games go 5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0, like on six maps, then I think you'd really have to be... Like, it's hard to mentally want to keep practicing when you know that on in your actual match that week you're probably going to get belted. So uh, if I could give advice to all those players, I would say, uh, like, know which of the games where, you're, where you have a good chance of winning and make sure that you think about the season as, like, a, a lead-up to those games, like, uh, yes. and don't get demotivated. The strongest teams that I've seen have like lasted through that. They've accepted it and they've just taken it and they've improved, and they stick together. Most importantly, so that's where that most. Yeah, go on. You see it a lot in ESEA as well for newer open teams because the way ESEA scheduling works, uh, since I'm assuming some of you guys aren't too familiar with that, is your first eight games are random against anybody in open, and then the last eight. Or the old scheduling system, now they made it so that more games are random. But it was that your last eight were then matched up against teams closer to your record. So your first eight games could have been against the top eight teams in Open, and you could have been one of the worst teams in Open, and then you get matched up along the bottom in the second half. And in my first season of Open, there was a thread that just kind of like, how, how's your season going for new Open teams? Uh, and there's a quote from Ben K, uh, Bank, Ben K, Ben, whatever you want to call him, in it. Where it said getting smashed in your first in your first season in your first season of open and in the first eight games is kind of like a rite of passage. All the all the players who go on to do anything make it through it, and it is definitely the same thing. Is they, a lot of teams get so discouraged losing those first eight random games that they die before they get even to the second half. So seeing where you're coming from in prem, where you're getting smashed early by Jasmine, if the team's not like mentally they there to handle the fact that they're getting smashed early can really mess up some, some teams with potential. Now, other questions. Does anyone know actually how long those maps were? Uh, were like 
<laughs> they were, I don't think, longer than 15 minutes. Um, okay. I quickly Final checked up the logs, I'm but they weren't. Game. It was 11 cons game, it apparently won't have been for 30 minutes, so I was being really? told by but... uh, Quidden Fid last night. Oh, uh, but both of them went to Mercy Rule, like it was a 5-0 and a 6-1, if I'm not mistaken. I... In, you unless can have, it's you like can have slow five zero. Yeah. Yeah. The but... the, the reason oh, I asked okay. is it, is it Sorry, more of like stop. is it one more was of 15. like both one were both are fifteen minutes. Both are fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes forty six. One fifteen minutes forty seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, it was something. Alright, so, so that is. Told um, so they have been bullshitting you. It's also amazingly cons uh, consistency. Um, but one thing I want to draw attention to that team, uh, in particular, I talked about sort of styles of play emerging. If you look at uh. The heal spread, so let's talk about process, the first map. Uh, obviously, stream doesn't have the logs, but what do you think about the fact that Rocky, for 11 corners, uh, took 40% of the heals, whereas the pocket, uh, Geo, for um, uh, Jasmine, 16.5%, and they put their their heals were so evenly spread uh, through their team. Uh, do we feel like they're going to run into some troubles there, learning sort of oh. what... Some people might call like a quote unquote incorrect style in the current meta. But it's well, to be honest, when it's like when you're losing that badly, you're probably going to be losing a lot of players, and you're going to be taking up a pocket to defend a lot. Yeah. More so than a scout in the situations, but yeah, Rocky is running a shotgun. He has got more of that like mindset that older pockets would use, like TLR and all that. Yeah. Where think, they think... they'd run a lot of heal heavy, uber heavy pockets. Yeah, like the pockets, pocket. If, if one if one pocket is going to run shotgun, I feel like Rocky is probably the person to do it, just because he does have like uh, really amazing sort of like DM ability. Yeah, never forget um, seventy damage mid range shotgun horror story is playing against Rocky. Yeah. They they are bru they can be super brutal. Like if you hit every shotgun, then the shotgun is like a like. A great weapon to use, but yeah. it's just it's, it's like, going to do talk about how much they can balance that out with their style of play. I feel. Yeah, like if they if they work around it and they they don't conform to the meta as much and they work around the older meta with the pocket, then yeah, probably take them far. But that's if they work around the meta. Uh, well, yeah. I think we've done a pretty good job just on prem on whole here so far. Looking at time, we have been running for quite a while, and I'm sure some of you guys. I want to get going fairly quick, so I do I think just want to touch a, on the top of I think we're just on a boring IM. topic, to be honest. So, so let's... <laughs> we're let, just like, let's... hey, let's analyze the healing in this one specific <laughs> game. Uh, it's yeah, really that's... important that like healing. No, it is. Yeah, yeah, but like, you know? is that the I'm purpose of this stream? But, well, um... no, let, look, we're, we're kind of overviewing everything and touching on everything, but so what we haven't touched on is I am. Anyone want to lead off um, on yeah, team immunity? Uh, Top top of IM seems like it'll be pretty decent. So from my <laughs> I Me too, Tom, don't worry. for those who got tripped yeah. over by my words just now. You messed with my head. I was like, I swear well. we already did them. Yeah, we thought we Sorry, it's the okay. ESCA and me going with IM because everyone here abbreviates it to it. Over there you obviously have a different meaning for that phrase. Yeah, we do. But now okay, yeah. For, again, just in case anyone's completely out of the loop, Oz Fortress is now Swiss system. We have IM and open, so no more. Divs, Prem, three five or whatever it's been. Um, top of IM, there's three teams that should pretty closely contest it. So there's ABC, which I'm just going to call Santa's team because I can't remember who else is on that roster. There's Roro's team, and then there is Unicycle, um, who I, I don't know, Bredogs. You can probably comment more on this, but I'd call them currently the three best IM teams, unless there's like any team that's recently come out of the woodwork. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say. Like, honestly, Unicycle haven't played much together, so we're pretty inconsistent. Like, I I played our match this week, but we have a different medic, and he's fairly inexperienced, Total Wampa. So I'm not still we're playing against him in Div Five. Yeah, I'm not still a hundred percent sure how we're gonna do, but I would say that's probably accurate. I think Bacardi had some good results this yes, week as team well. Yes, that wanted to be an open. And uh, five to three, five to three against arguably the top IM team, ABC. So uh, yeah, yeah, good work on them Damn trying to see themselves into open. So I would, I'd probably <laughs> say they'd they'd definitely be top four, probably top three. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of up in the air exactly how the top of open, uh, sorry, the top of IM is going to go. But I think there's a couple of teams that could contest. There's it feels like there's a pretty large gap between like 
sort of like maybe the top five teams or something and, and the then the rest of I am yeah so it's kind of not sh I'm not really sure who's going to make finals but there's definitely like a at least out of the four potential teams that can make finals there's sort of like a fair few names that you'd be mostly confident of say will like be playoff teams yeah especially um, ABC like it looks that I think they had some prem previous players on their team I can't exactly yes. remember uh, do we want to go over their roster? We may as well. Like, yeah, just a bit quickly. Of time. Um, so they've got Ben and uh, is how, how do you pronounce his name? Is it Yang Banger or Jang Banger? Jang Banger. Jang Banger. Jang Banger. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's a name I've heard in a hot minute. <laughs> yeah, he's come Yang back for a while. Banger. They've got uh, left on Romo, played Prem last season, if I'm not mistaken. Multi is back. <laughs> he's playing Medic. <laughs> and then we have uh, agent of autism himself, Santa on demo, and sort of like. I'd say the most inexperienced oh player on that team is a KPC on pocket. I believe this is like his second season, or maybe third. Like I know he, he I think he won Div Div Five. Div yeah, he won Div, Div, Div Five, and now he's uh, and now he's like playing for a top IM team as pocket. Like I've looked at a couple of their logs and watched a couple of like their scrims. He's doing surprisingly well for like the jump he's made in skill level. Like Boy. he's probably been their most standout player in just in terms of like. Who's impressed me the most? Anything else anyone wants to say on I am? Unfortunately, uh, I do not. I, I very. I don't. I don't know anything. For intermediate. Well, so, fair uh, enough. Well, here's the thing: is that Nat Carrier in chat? Please. In, that, yeah. in some, <laughs> and someone's asking us: is this a one-off thing, or is this going to continue in the future? Maybe. We'll Maybe we're like gonna it. do another one of these on IM by you know halfway through the season or something. Uh, yeah. Stop! I can't keep calling it IM, man. It's yeah. so confusing. Probably oh, intermediate. Intermediate. Uh, intermediate yeah. Sorry. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly shoehorn open into this discussion while I have the chance. Really? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> about open? Know, I'm serious. Let's, let's go. Let's, Hold um, on. What's exciting about open? You're okay. gonna open oh. up this discussion here. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay. I'm biased here playing on an open team. As, See you like, later. Probably a good number of teams are like, I'd say roughly even level, like at the very top of open. Um, I guess I'll go through them. So there's, if I can remember the name, there's Wheelchair Warriors, which is the uh, New Zealand team. There's BAD, which um, that's Beck and Yorda, and I think a few other Highlander players, I can't quite remember their roster. Yorda's pretty good, I think. Yeah. Uh, I can bring up their roster in a second. Um, there's my own team, which is uh, Dale plus five whales. Wow, biased. Yeah, I'm just being really That's biased very here. Biased. It is. It is super biased. Um, um, there's nerds, although I think they've been seated in IM. I'm not sure. Um, wow. Beer and Skittles. Like, there's actually a few teams that are fairly closely contested at the top of Open. So, like, I don't know if previous, if you've watched like previous like Div maybe three, four, five finals. There's always been like that one blowout team that just like stomps everyone else in the division. So hopefully, like now the Swiss system, it's not really going to be like that anymore, which is probably the best thing. Like at least for the lower divisions, obviously it doesn't affect invite in the slightest. But um, or prem, I mean, we're not invite in Australia. But I feel Keep like up it... the good work, folks. Sticking to this <laughs> new lexicon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. But I feel like uh, the move to Swiss system has really helped, sort of just like just below the top of the scene, like, you know, from the, you know, uh, yeah, obviously I am down, like, you know, previously, you know, Div 2 down. I think it's a big step up in terms of, you know, the um, competition it provides. Well, I, right. I feel like there are a lot of players in open, like, I'm just, going, I'm just literally opening up the rosters, going down the Oswaldress page, and, like, there there's no again, team. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I opened something that I can't, can't put back in the bag now. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> no, there's no team which is like really, really stand out as like the best team, but there seems to be like a lot of open teams with like fairly good players on them. And yeah, there's a like, lot of um experience. I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite impressed with that. Like, I feel like open is like good enough to be like a, a competitive challenge, but also like open enough that if any team wants to oh. like well. employ some <laughs> employ some ripe strategies, maybe then they could win. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. With at least you know the teams I've been streaming and how it's been going, I yeah completely agree. Open Open's going to be a good season. I think 
it'll definitely be a step up from like having Div 4 and Div 5 where there's just been like that one or maybe two teams that just stomps everyone else and it's just kind of like a shit show for the rest of the divs. But Fear, how can there be ripe strategies if Bunnies has been relegated to IM? <laughs> when you say relegated to IM? They put them, they tried to get themselves an open, that Bunnies well, team. That's a, that's a classic ripe strategy uh, tactic. Um, sandbagging in lower, lower divisions. But I don't know. Um, it was more a reference to the Microsoft Paint incident. All right. Uh, so, uh, a moment, a moment. Let's yeah, wrap it up. Let's wrap it right? up. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I got kind of like two small topics that I just want to go. I've got a couple like questions that some people have sent me, which I'll save for the very end. Uh, and the other one is just quickly. Maybe get like each of you one player in IM or open or like the bottom of prem. Maybe not bottom of prem, but like who you think is super up and coming. People should kind of keep an eye on for you know an IM who's going to develop and might be that next big prem player next season. Uh, we look at. I mean, we mentioned way earlier there were there were people like uh, that haven't really played that long and they're now starting to make impacts in prem. So anyone have kind of like a a prospect in this or I guess in the sim similarities to like Lucrative's uh, interview series on the Spire, on the cusp of making Prem and being a, a good player, like you yeah. know, what I mean? uh, like a name that instantly comes to mind, and I, I know I assumed he'd play Prem this season, but uh, Roro, like out of his past couple of seasons, like that guy's just gotten crazy good. I'm honestly quite surprised he wasn't playing Prem this season. So, like in terms of a player that I think should be playing Prem in the next season and will do really well, yeah, I'll give that to him. Anyone else wants to like add in on that? Who, yeah, bro, Ignormous? Bro's definitely got solid DM. Um, who would I say? I'd say um, Mitch. Um, he's playing for like maybe chess club. In Mitch, IM. the production guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's a different, Mitch. Mitch, say Mitch. What? what Not Mitch. Just no, no, Mitch. no, no, no. Ignore Dreamboat. He's he's memeing. Anyway, um, what I'm saying is. Yeah, I think he's definitely got the, uh, the potential. I feel like Chess Club have the potential to be a, a, a reasonable team in intermediate. Um, there are a lot of good intermediate teams, man. I'm looking at them. Good team. I think, uh, what class is Magpie playing for his team in ABC? Backup. Backup? Backup? Okay. Because yeah. I was, because I saw him on the class. roster, I was a little bit surprised. I'm like, that seems like a bit of a prem name these days. <laughs> um, whether you want to take that as shots to player disparity or whatever, it's up to you. But uh, other than that, and some past past prem names in uh, intermediate, we've got Dice or Fanatical in a. Uh, Team Chess Club, I don't know what class he's playing for that someone team. Linked, someone linked the Twitter. I think he's also playing back up. Yeah, um, he's back he's up. He's also back up, yeah. Back up, back up, back up. I think Doc has always been, like, just outside hey, tier. I feel like, like, he's always been, like, a name that I've uh, had in the back of my mind for a very long time. He's, like, he's actually been playing this game for a, quite a while now. Actually, so... Yeah... He's got... There's something there, I think. Dom Rainer, Bro Dogs? You, any of you guys have a name to throw out? Ignormous? Yeah. He could play. I played with him before when I was in Div 3, and he was a pretty strong player. Like, the team was very committed. Oh, uh, also, probably Randy. He's the single most um, well endorsed, successful uh, player in in Australia, <laughs> winning a thousand dollar he did. <laughs> Never Wait, forget. Uh, you, like, I will link, I will link you the vote for that. I will, I will tell you about it after the The gist of it is, okay. the gist of it is, one of his friends thought he was hot shit at TF2, and he's like, "I'm a, putting a thousand dollar reduce on the line, and you win this girl as well. It's like <laughs> yeah, a best of three, girl. like a best of three of challenges, like MGE and heavy fists. I don't know." We oh got like God. who was casting a comedian? Graver. <laughs> yeah, Graver. Graver. Uh, Milky was there. Yeah, good. The bots on Graver TV. Yeah, single most endorsed player in uh, Oceania. Yeah, but but like the thing with 
Randy. Like, he came up for us this season in Unicycle. But... I know, but he, he's been around Div 2 yeah, he's and Div 3 a while. I think he's definitely, like, worthwhile mentioning. I think also another player worthwhile mentioning is Jay Blades, not because of his TF2 skill, but because of his uh, superb Os Asu standard okay. skills. Apparently, like see, 11th see, with in that hand motion. Yeah, sure. I thought you were talking about a whole nother superior skill out of him with that hand motion. All right, being complete, being serious. Like Randy hasn't played in a while. He's come back and started playing again. Maybe he'll find his form again, but at the moment he can't hit anything. So nice. if he's he's got to improve back to his normal level. Shots fired. So he's looking like a dream boat. Missed mostly missed. Yeah, pretty much. Um, as for other players. No. Sorry. Yeah, anybody else got any other players? Uh, like, I was going to say, Tom, I think it's the only person who hasn't said something. Oh, I had, um, right so I guess, I don't, I don't really know, to be honest, but I would probably say Ohio or Spaz yeah, might really be, really they're pretty well. decent. Yeah. They've seen, like, I haven't watched much Spaz before, but having played with him, he impressed me on Roma, so I think he could be good, maybe next season. And I think Ohio has been fragging stuff on Scout, so... I'm yeah, I agree with that. Teams, or? I definitely agreed. I think Ohio's on Roro, right? 5 0. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Temple of. What, what, what's that team name? It's Fernando it's 5 0 really and the Temple of Roro. Oh, God, That's a that very is. good team name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tom, you're like. Any players from you? You think I'll um, come I have, I have two names. I'm not going to like go like whatever everyone else has done and go like people who played for a million seasons and in intermediate or whatever. Might and be I'm going to give. Okay, Michael Lash. He's a player who like really impressed oh, yeah. me in Pug, so yeah. I think like he could be like it's he's in the two, he could be the top of intermediate or going into invite. I played with him in matchmaking. Yeah, he's pretty decent. He's like, he's what team good. is he playing on? Um I don't know what team he's on. I think he's on the team though. I'll I'll check. And uh, my other player would be Garth. I think it's like also has like the intelligence to be like a really good like passive scout. So he needs to work on her DM, I guess. And that's it for me. Good cool. stuff. So I'll get in. I guess I got message three questions. Only one of them was really serious. Um, but I do kind of. I feel like I should ask the other two. Uh, fear. Someone's asking me if you're okay. It looks like you might cr you might break down crying any minute now. Um, um I I, just... I guess it's just the lighting of your cam, but or are you actually? I'm actually, I'm actually sad all the time, man. Like... Fear, give us a forehead. You have an excellent forehead face. Um, According to no. Riot, I have your face and you have my face. Riot said that in chat. I don't know what, what you're talking about. I feel like we have to watch the VOD of this and just work out just how to how to set up my laptop, which is currently perched atop a book. Um, better next time. Yeah, that helps. Get a webcam. The, the other, the other, I guess, kind of. Non-serious question is, I guess, with your tie, like the tiling behind you, bro, dog. Someone's asking if you're doing this from your bathroom. <laughs> that, that's actually. I can uh, uh, no, this is my room. room. <laughs> that is his bathroom. No, those, that's just my Who wardrobe. Who was that old player in um Justice? That's right. You remember Justice, the tiled floor bedroom, bro, dog? Oh, I remember that. Just classic master, dude. Holy moly. Yeah, he was and a then, shit player full of very strong opinions. And uh, then the actual serious question is going out to, I guess, me and my fellow casters sitting in this call with me. And may maybe it's to, get, to make a little bit of uh, awkwardness here, but they're asking who your favorite casting partner is. Like, who you feel you're the best duo with. And I'm not gonna go first because I don't want to offend anyone in this call. Me, um, myself, but I'll let you guys. and I. <laughs> Actually, no. I'm gonna take the cop out, and I'm gonna go with my boy Flatline in North America. Suck it up. Smooth. I mean, we're so close to hitting number five stream. So close to oh. getting that stream. And it's just about to end. Yeah. A bit more warning next time. Uh, oh, make it a weekly. Someone will do bonus hates. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably my favorite co caster. I don't know, it's tough. Um, probably Tondre. I don't know, I've always enjoyed casting with him. That being said. <laughs> that being said. That being, that that being said. I didn't, I did say that. 
We'll just end this. Uh, I hate hearing that so much. <laughs> Every oh time you say it, I'm just like, God damn. It'll, it'll, it'll change. Uh, I hope so. How about you, Fiona? I knew you enjoyed casting with. Um, I actually enjoyed casting with a lot of people. I casted with Yuki once, and we had a very weird experience. Like, we both started talking really fast for, like, four minutes each. You just turned it up to 11. <laughs> like, and for some reason, like, we, we started doing it, like, when there was action, but also when there wasn't action, but we still was, we would always talk at the same speed. It must have been the weirdest thing to listen to. I've never listened to the VOD, but... Uh, so that was, like, it. looking back on it, that was a very interesting casting experience. Uh, but my absolute favourite, I actually, I actually don't know. I, I like casting with everyone, to be honest. That's a bit of a... That's a huge cop-out. not answering the question, but... I mean, the real cop out should be Dreamboat, but jeez, um, no, I'm not just it, man. Yeah, maybe I just don't like any of you guys enough to have a favorite. Wow, oh. I, I enjoy. Like I enjoy Yuki casting with Quiet, to be honest. I w- I will say say I have had fun casting with all of you guys. Like Smithsonian is not here. Fear cast with you. Foz, we did one too. That was that was good. Uh, that that was fun. Um, but also. Big shout out to the guy who debuted our season, opening match of the season, as the as co-casted with me, Sideshow. Like that was oh god, yeah, a great oh, experience. Yeah, god, and and the fact that you know, big shout out to him for actually coming in and oh wait, wait, can I can I change my pick then? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna now. go Sal and Mr. Slin and Sideshow. At, uh, <laughs> oh, Sideshow was... was fun when I cast with him once. Yeah. I think the only person I've ever casted with is Ferrisar, so I'm gonna go with Tom, Ferrisar. Tom, I was in this <laughs> time. The thing is, like, we'd only do cast drunk. Uh, I'll get drunk and do a cast of an of an intermediate game with you this season, Tom. <laughs> well, are you 18 yet? Um, oh, I turned 18, like, two weeks ago, dude, so... Nice, dude! I'm actually that legal. That legal. Alright. This has been going on for quite a while. I don't see any other real questions. Like serious questions in chat here. It's being uploaded to YouTube. So yeah, we're uploading this. Uh, whether or not we're gonna continue doing this regularly. I mean, Bro Dogs, you wanna say anything about that? Um, I really like to work out some form of regular po- uh, panel thing. I don't know if it'll be this large or it'd probably be more focused. Probably try to keep it within an hour or something, but. I think you um, definitely need yeah. as well. An hour I mean, and a half is a good time to aim for. But yeah, like this was a really good like starting panel because there's just so much to talk about. But if we we're going to do it more regularly, probably specific topics and keep it specific time. But yeah, I, I'd really like to do a continuing panel. Yeah, I think it'd be great. Um, I guess that kind of trails into my other kind of just closing remarks that I were, I had <laughs> on my mind is that if anybody in chat has anything they want to see us push out in terms of content like we we're doing this new panel thing uh we've been pumping out casts but yeah know, subscribe to us on twitch like follow us whatever it's called dude, drop a follow um but if there's anything you want to see us churn out like if, you're, if you feel there's something lacking in the scene which is now <laughs> getting like, power ranking and coverage from the spy or there's tftv shout coverage, out to highlights, you in the spy all that yeah the spy good work spy Find some good uh, articles in there. And really, before we just like totally wrap things off and go off the air, any shout outs any of you guys want to give? Start with, uh, I guess I'll go with the order that shows up on stream. So, Tom, followed by Fear, Foz, Render, Kaizen, and Brodogs. Sound good for you guys? That order? Yeah. So, Tom, any shout outs? Uh, shout out to my dog. Shout out to Rack. Shout out to everyone who like tuned in and everyone like is doing this now. It's been great doing this. And that's it. Fear. Fear died. Fear. <laughs> Never forget. Oh, he's oh, just wait, muted he's back? his mic, I think. He muted yeah, he his mic. Fear. No, rest in peace. Yep. Uh-oh. Fear is just straight oh, for fear. True. I was actually just not pressing my push to talk button, but I'm walking anyway. <laughs> See, this is why you don't use push to talk like a scrub. Anyway, uh, I my shout outs are to Mario Koala, uh, to Rack, um, to Oz Fortress, to Kenneth, uh, to King Carl, aka Kenneth, and yeah, that's it. Nice. Pause. 
Uh, yeah, shout out to Brogs for just like putting this on sort of last minute. Everyone for mm. doing this has been fun. Uh, shout out to Dale for Five Wales. Hopefully, future open champs. Oh yeah. Moving on. Render. A shout out to the Casas getting this whole show back on the road, back from old times. Uh, shout out to World Underground and Wasabi. Shout out to Tigrod and Yukari and Corgi. And Kaiser. Shout out to my boys in Anime Crew 2010. Uh, Yukari, TG, and Sponge. Um, uh, who else? I don't know. Shout out to everyone for making this happen, basically. Uh, and have a happy Easter, everyone, if you if you celebrate it. Go Easter spend, Sunday is my birthday. Yeah, go spend time with your family. Um... Yeah. Oh yeah, shout out to the Spire it's... and Backcap as usual. Go yeah, to those backup. two places. Backcap's great. It's incredible. Like the work um, yeah. that the Spire is doing, the fact that it's covering everything now. Yeah. T yeah. The fact that TFDB has highlights and that we have just like a weekly wrap up package. Like. Uh, yeah, some like good Backup interviews up there. So cool. Into yeah, my yeah, 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 I heard the wrong one was pretty shout nice. Shout out to Tomunus for. Thinking that I was actually like super duper mad and calling you out in the Discord about my article <laughs> when I was just like being really like just not serious at all. It's okay, dude. You don't have to get so defensive. <laughs> it's alright, man. You can chill. Um, yeah, so uh, fucking. Go to the spy. Whoa, it's right That's Square job. One for the job. job. One second. It's getting late. Alright, yeah, um. Yeah. Spire, there's some good interviews there with Rocky and myself. You should check them out. I, I do power rankings occasionally. Yeah, the... power rankings, what have you. And that's uh, the Spire.tv, you know? Uh, that's yes. right. Yep. As well as, uh, they will be bringing out casting too. I don't know, I don't think they have plans for Australian coverage, but they will be bringing out, um, I know, NA6s and EU6s and HL for both of those as well. So, definitely an exciting project that's being made. Um, yeah, bro dogs. Any yeah. Final words that you want to say in any shout out? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I just want to give a big shout out to everyone that's donated to the Oz Fortress 15 Premier Prize Pool. You're really helping the scene grow, so thank you very much. I won't steal your money. It is sitting in my PayPal account. He's stealing your money, everyone. He's gonna steal your money. Yeah. He's gonna buy. Gonna skins. transfer it to an offshore account. No, yeah. he's gonna buy. If you get, get out a, of here. If you guys get an email soon about uh like. You know, Redux needs a Nigerian prince out of jail. And you know where the money's going. Yeah. Nah, but, but seriously. Least... And I guess lastly, as you say that too, we, um, can someone just throw the link to the uh, donations? Yeah, I'll do that now. Um, up in chat, just so that people know where to go to donate to the high school for the league. Keep going, Brad. Yeah. Um, yeah, shout out to Backcap, shout out to the Spire, shout out to TFTD, and. Um... Yeah, shout outs to all of you and all the other people involved in TF Live for making stuff happen. Otherwise, we wouldn't have coverage. So, I really appreciate you guys giving your time. And of course, shout out to all the viewers for keeping an eye on Oz Fortress coverage. We know a lot of you have to stay up late or get up early, especially if you're on, from NA or EU. So, oh my god, yeah. Yeah. Being at 3 a.m. Yeah. Rip Canada. So, we really appreciate it. And um, hopefully, we'll be able to improve our coverage more and make sure you can get the best possible viewing experience. Yeah, so I'll just wrap up here. I do want to, I'm not going to rehash any of the shoutouts like to the Spire back out because obviously those are there, but I will give a quick shout out to my boy Alpha Alpha. It's, he's in the same city as me, so it's 1.41 a.m. here and he's stayed up and I think he's watched all of my Australian cast so far, so good on him. Um, and then Bro Dogs, I don't know how you did it. We talked about this as a half serious idea, like earlier tonight, and the fact that it really became more serious and we managed to pull this together. I think we did it in an hour, and the fact that we've had a solid viewer base for this time actually shows that you did a pretty good job, uh, just as you've done as pretty much everything in terms of production for uh, TF Live TV. So big shout out to you, Bro Dogs. Oh, thanks. Um, sure. Throw some hearts up for Brodog's chat. Yeah, those of you still here, please uh, do it. He deserves. Um, yeah, this is 
has been fun and can't wait to do something similar again if you guys like that that's for sure um and have a great evening i'm dreamboat and thanks for joining me communist bro dogs uh fear kaiza render and last but most importantly fosm foslam did i pronounce it right that time it has an l in it just Fos it has an l in it yeah Fos okay foslam it'll be foslam now i give up foslam foslam i can't do it <laughs> Everyone it's else do it. Yes, see awesome. Kaiser. Awesome. There we go. Awesome. There we go. Let's just end this. Good night, everybody. Night. <laughs>